Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. Today, uh, we will celebrate together in praise and song with our youth and our children, and we are glad that you are here with us. So, our, so the sympathies of the congregation are extended to Jean Miller, Alan, Doug, Wendy, Cameron, and Madison on the death of their father and grandfather, Jim. So let's please keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Today's bulletins are in loving memory of Floyd McLean, presented by Jeanette Stewart, Janet Stewart. You will see some beautiful roses here at the front of the church. They are presented in loving memory of Mary Laird by close friends Edna Mae Rodwell and Barbara Curzon, who are visiting with us today from London, Ontario. So Edna May and Barbara, where are you this morning? Are you here? There they are. Welcome. We have birthday greetings today to Roger MacArthur, and coming up this week to Elaine Godkin, Charlotte Foster, and Matthew Mahood. So a happy birthday to all of those people celebrating in our community of faith. We have a couple other announcements this morning, uh, one by Vicki Allen Cook and one by Norman. <coughs> Vicki draws the winning card here, so. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, good morning, everybody. Uh, we would like to invite everyone to an incredible evening of music uh, with Arioso, and it is tonight. Uh, this delightful women's choral ensemble from Kensington PEI will be performing here at 7. Uh, their musical repertoire uh, consists of Celtic to folk and contemporary to sacred and classical. So, uh, the tickets are $15 each and they will be available at the door at 6 o'clock p.m. We hope to see you there. Bring a friend, tell a neighbor. We'd love to have everybody here. So hopefully we'll see you tonight. Good morning. Well, this is the last Sunday before the lobster takeout supper, which is this Wednesday, June the 6th. Please do not forget to pick up your suppers on Wednesday afternoon between 3.30 and 5.30 p.m. I thank everyone who purchased tickets and trust you will enjoy your supper. I also thank everyone who was involved in selling tickets. We still have 31 tickets left to sell. I will be at the Richmond Street entrance after the service and you will be able to purchase tickets in the office Monday morning until 12 noon. We have to cut it off sometime because we have to notify our lobster supplier. Now, if you have not turned in your money as yet, I would appreciate it if you would please do so as soon as possible. Thank you very much. 
It's my pleasure this morning to acknowledge and thank on behalf of the whole congregation all of those who have uh, given of their time and their energy and their, their gifts in this past program year, um, working with and playing with our children and youth. If you look on page six of your bulletins, you will see the names there of our Sunday school teachers, our godly play storytellers, our godly play door persons, our Sunday school hall monitor, and the members of our Christian Education Committee. And we have over 50 children registered in our Sunday school uh, this past year. We haven't always had all 50 here on the same Sunday, but we do have 50 registered and 50 who have come through our doors and been with their, their peers in classes and had lots of great learning experiences. I can tell you um, from a personal perspective that it's just been an absolute joy to work with all of the women who have been guiding our children and youth over this past year. They are creative, they are committed, they are fun, they are skilled, they are approachable, and they're flexible. And we're going to kick all of this off uh, today with, with all of them here. And I would like to invite any of you who are teachers, uh, godly play storytellers, godly play door persons, hall monitor, or members of the Christian Education Committee to please stand. I know you're out there. <laughs> and let's, let's express our gratitude with a round of applause. I also want to acknowledge, of course, the children and youth who are leading us in our worship today, to all of you for bringing such uh, great spirits and energy and life to our congregation. We also say a word of thanks to you and a special acknowledgement this morning of our confirmands whom we are joining with today to celebrate their unfolding of their spiritual journeys in the context of our congregation. So to all of the children and youth who are here, would you please rise so we could give you a round of applause as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Mel and I and Gail Hopkirk, together with the teachers and the storytellers, will be working together through the summer months to prepare um, an exciting program for the next program year starting in September. We welcome your input, your feedback. We'd love to hear what went well for you in the past year, and we'd love to hear any ideas or suggestions you might have for us too. And finally, just to let you all know that beginning next week, because Sunday school finishes for the summer today, but beginning next week and then through until we begin classes again in the fall, um, all of the children will be invited to remain in worship for the whole service as the summer months unfold, beginning next week. And our smaller children who may feel a little restless for the whole service will be invited to join one of our adults in the corner in the children's area. We will have quiet activities for them to engage in each week. And we hope that all of us can just um, embrace one another regardless of age and have a wonderful worship experience in the coming weeks. We'll continue our worship now with the lighting of the Christ candle, and I invite Laura Scantleberry to come forward. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, so let us be light in our world this day. As we gather to worship, we acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Abiquit Mi'kmaq First Nation. As we gather now, let us take a quiet moment to prepare for worship.
God has given us this beautiful earth and all that grows and runs upon it. Thanks be to God. God has given us breath to live and spirit to sing. Thanks be to God. God has gathered us into his community of love. Let us worship God. I would invite everyone to join in singing. It's a song of praise to the maker. It's from More Voices, number 30. Let us gather in prayer. God, our maker, be with us in our worship. God of leafy bough and climbing rose, of azure sky and summer light, let life abound in our congregation. Let it speak to us of the goodness of creation and the presence of your great love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. At Youth Forum this year, we focused on our stories, telling our stories, sharing our stories, and writing our stories. We talked about how we are the authors of our stories and how we will change history 
by living those stories to the fullest and being ourselves. Live your story, change history. Don't worry, we got this. This was my first year going to Intermediates at Conference, and I hope I get to go back again. I met lots of new friend, friends, and the music was great. I, I especially enjoyed worship. There was lots of dancing. Another highlight was community outreach, activities where we did random acts of kindness for the people of Sackville. I helped with the food bank. Staying at the Mount Allison dorms was pretty cool, and we were lucky to have some great food from the cafeteria. Thank you for this amazing opportunity, and it will be the highlight of my whole year. An important part of conference is the music. We are going to share with you a few songs, starting with Your Love is Amazing. A reading from the first Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to God under Eli. The word of God was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight has, had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of God, where the ark of, of God was. Then God called, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So Samuel went and laid down. God called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know God, and the word of God had not been revealed to him. God called Samuel again a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, 
Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that God was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if God calls you, you shall say, Speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. Now God came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Now every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. And when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him amongst their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found Jesus in the temple, sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in God's house? But they did not understand what Jesus said to them. Then Jesus went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. Amen. In the calendar year, we celebrate four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. In the church year, we celebrate nine seasons, and the church year begins with the season of Advent. The color of Advent is blue. Blue like the sky. Blue like the sky. Blue like the ocean. Blue like the ocean. Blue like blueberries. Advent is the time of waiting, waiting, waiting. Waiting for Christmas to come, waiting to unwrap gifts, waiting for Jesus to be born. The season of Advent is followed by the season of Christmas. The color of Christmas is white. White like clouds. White like a snowman. White like a bunny rabbit in the snow. Christmas is a time to celebrate. Gifts are given and unwrapped. The biggest and best gift ever was given when baby Jesus was born under the twinkling white stars.
and the season of Christmas is followed by the season of Epiphany. The color of the season of Epiphany is green. Green like pine trees and green like pine trees and kiwi fruit. Green like shamrocks and Granny Smith apples. In green seasons, we we are learning about Jesus. We learned that when Jesus was baptized. The Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. The voice of God said, This is my beloved child. I am pleased with him. When my friends and I are confirmed this morning, we will be affirming our baptismal vows. We will be accepting that we too are beloved children of God. God is pleased with us. The season of Epiphany is followed by the season of Lent. The color of Lent is purple. Purple like a bunch of grapes. Purple like an eggplant. Purple like some... Sea urchins. Lent is a time for repenting, which means turning. We turn toward the grace of God to prayerfully examine our living, that we might live with compassion and justice. And the season of Lent is followed by the season of Easter. The color of the season of Easter is white. White like polar bears. White like milk. White like doves and angels' wings. Easter is a time of miracles and mystery. Caterpillars bursting into butterflies seeds growing into flowers, Jesus who died still with us. The season of Easter is followed by the day of Pentecost. The color of Pentecost is red. Red for roses and ladybugs. Red for poppies and island clay roads. On Pentecost, the spirit comes like flames of fire. Our hearts burn within us, enlivening us, forming us into a church community. On Pentecost, the spirit comes like a mighty wind, blowing away the cobwebs that clutter our minds. Every day, with every breath that we take, the spirit enters our bodies to renew our physical and spiritual lives. Breathe in. Feel the life-giving breath of the spirit. The season of Pentecost is followed by more ordinary Sundays. The color of ordinary times is still green. Green for broccoli, green for alligators, green for grass. We are growing. We are learning that Jesus was a healer. He came close to people no one else would come close to. 
Jesus came so close to the blind beggar sitting at the side of the road that he could touch the beggar's eyes and give him sight. The beggar saw things he had never seen before. These ordinary times are followed by the season of creation. The color of the season of creation is orange. Orange like a carrot. Orange like a pumpkin. Orange like tiger lilies. The season of creation is time to remember, to care for all that God created, to remember to drink water from a tap, not a plastic bottle, to remember to use a paper straw, not a plastic straw, to remember when we are at the grocery store to take our reusable bags out of the trunk of the car. The season of creation is followed by Ordinary Sundays. The color of ordinary times is green. Green like turtles and toads, green like forests and fern fronds. In these ordinary times, we are learning meaning still more. Jesus was a teacher. He told parables to teach us about God. He said that God is like the woman who searches for a lost coin. He said the realm of God is like when a person sows a tiny seed and it grows into a great tree. Jesus also taught by example when he went to worship each Sabbath and went to quiet, quiet places to pray. As a form of prayer this morning, a form of meditation, I invite you to take the pipe cleaner that you were given and um, I expect we might have run out so, of pipe cleaners, so if you happen to have two and someone beside you does not have one, if you would share, please, that would be great. Are there those who do not have a pipe cleaner? Can you raise your hands? Okay, I see sharing going on, thank you. Consider all that you have heard this morning about the seasons of the church year. What stood out for you, or what was meaningful for you this morning in all that you heard? I invite you to take your pipe cleaner and to make a shape, a symbol, or a figure so that you can take it with you and remember worship this morning. Let us prayerfully, meditatively, form our pipe cleaners into a shape to remember this, se this season or one of the seasons of the church year. We offer our prayers to God, and in the name of Jesus, amen. Like the calendar year, the church year has a beginning, and it has an end. 
Every beginning has an ending, but every ending has a beginning. We return again and again to the seasons of the church year, each time coming with deeper understanding, more wisdom, and greater faith. And each time we come, we come more like the person whom we are created to be. Thanks be to God. As we share and celebrate around colors, let us sing My Love, Colors Outside the Lines from More Voices 138. Gail's concluding words to coloring outside the lines bear repeating this morning. For every beginning, there is an ending, and for every ending, there is a beginning. We return again and again to the great mystery and miracles of Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost, and to the deep wisdom of Lent, creation, and ordinary times. Again and again, we return. Each time we bring greater understanding and deeper faith, we bring more of who we are created to be. Beloved confirmands, each of you has experienced the great mystery and miracles of Christmas and Easter and Pentecost, and the deep wisdom of Lent and creation and ordinary times. You have experienced them year after year after year since you were baptized as little babies. And like the young Samuel, about whom Luke read this morning, you may have struggled by times to understand that mystery and those miracles and to recognize God's voice. Yet like the young Jesus about whom Ashley read this morning, you have listened and studied and responded to that deep wisdom, to God's call to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. And we as your families and as your friends and as your community of faith 
Rejoice in your decision to confirm God's call upon your lives this day. When the joys of your lives are made known to us, we, the church, will celebrate your gladness. When the sorrows of your lives are shared with us, you will find here holy ground on which to grieve. When the beauty of creation is brimming over, we will count on you to remind us of its sacredness. When the brokenness of our world causes pain, we will look to you to lead us in the ways of Jesus. When we as a congregation falter, when we fail to embody a wild imagination and a prophetic vision, a bold witness and courageous action, a gospel of comfort, yet one of challenge, call us forward. Call us forward anew to be the beloved community, the center, the place, the safe harbor for all who are hurting and oppressed, the home of God's goodness and God's grace. Remind us, this church, your church, whatever churches you may be a part of some future day, remind us to be relevant in the world in all that we do, and in all that we say. For every beginning, there is an ending. And for every ending, there is a beginning. We return again and again to the great mystery and miracles of Christmas and Easter and Pentecost, and to the deep wisdom of Lent and creation and ordinary times. Again and again we return. Beloved confirmants, as you begin a new leg of your spiritual journeys this day, may you know that we who have gathered and the God of all beginnings and endings and beginnings again, the God who is there to hear your morning cry and will be there when you are old. May you know that we rejoice with you always as your lives and as your faith unfold. May it be so. Amen. Our hymn is found in Voices United at 644 selected verses, which will be found on your worship screens as well.
please be seated. <clears throat> By the sacrament of baptism, we are marked as children of God and members of the body of Christ. By the symbol of water, which brought forth life at creation and cleansed the earth in the flood. By the power of God's Spirit, we are reminded that we are cleansed and nurtured by the never-failing stream, welling up to eternal life. In the act of confirmation, those baptized come before the community to renew the covenant of baptism. By this act, these individuals profess their faith in God, revealed in Jesus, and active through the Spirit, and commit themselves to the worship and the work of the body of Christ. We have inquired of these persons and found that they desire to reaffirm their baptismal vows in Christ's church and in this church community of faith, Trinity Clifton United Church. I present these persons to you that they may do that now. Please come forward as your name is called. Jessica Starr Campbell. Luke Randy Locke Duaron. Julie Eleanor Hall. William Angus Neal McLeod, Chloe Jean Much, Laura Dawn Scanhelberry, and Ashley Jillian Willis. Beloved children of God, God who knew you before you were born, and who was active in your baptism is present with you now. God will bless and strengthen you anew by the Spirit so that you may increase in the knowledge of God and be empowered to do God's will in the world. I ask you, therefore, before God and this community of faith, do you believe in God, source of love, in Jesus, love incarnate, and in the Holy Spirit, love's power? If so, please answer together, I do by the grace of God. Will you follow in the way of Jesus, resisting oppression and evil, seeking justice, and witnessing to God's love for all creation? If so, please answer together, I will, God being my helper. Will you join with this community of faith to celebrate God's presence, live with respect in creation, and love and serve others? If so, please answer together, I will, God being my helper. Let us pledge to our confirmands our continued support and care. Please rise as you are able. In one voice, let us join together. We will continue to support you, walk with you, and grow with you. With God's help, we will live out our baptism as a loving community in Jesus Christ, nurturing one another in faith, upholding one another in prayer, encouraging one another in God's work. And let us continue as one voice with our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, 
who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And I invite Jessica to Lord. By the gift of your Spirit, O God, strengthen Jessica that she may be true to you all her life. Amen. Jessica, live in the world in the power of God that you may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. And together let us say, Amen. Jessica, receive this Bible, and with your family in Christ, continue to grow in faith, trusting in God's promise. By the gift of your Spirit, O God, strengthen Luke, that he may be true to you all his life. Amen. Luke, live in the world, in the power of God, that you may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. And together we say, Amen. Luke, receive this Bible, and with your family in Christ, continue to grow in faith and trust in God's promises. By the gift of your Spirit, O God, strengthen Julie, that she may be true to you all her life. Amen. Julie, live in the world, in the power of God, that you may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. And together we say, Amen. Julie, receive this Bible and with your family in Christ, continue to grow in faith, trusting in God's promises.
By the gift of your spirit, O God, strengthen William, that he may be true to you all his life. Amen. William, live in the world in the power of God, that you may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. And together we say, Amen. William, receive this Bible, and with your family in Christ, continue to grow in faith, trusting in God's promises. By the gift of your spirit, O God, strengthen Chloe, that she may be true to you all her life. Amen. Chloe, live in the world in the power of God, that you may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. And together we say, Amen. Chloe, receive this Bible, and with your family in Christ, continue to grow in faith, trusting in God's promises. By the gift of your spirit, O God, strengthen Laura, that she may be true to you all her life. Amen. Laura, live in the world in the power of God, that you may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. And together we say, Amen. Laura, receive this Bible, and with your family in Christ, continue to grow in faith, trusting in God's promise. You can touch the person in front of you and I think you really can. Wonderful. By the gift of your spirit, O oh God, strengthen Ashley that she may be true to you all her life. Amen. Ashley, live in the world, in the power of God, that you may do justice, love kindness and walk humbly with your God. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Ashley, receive this Bible, and with your family in Christ, continue to grow in faith, trusting in God's promises. And I'm going to invite all of you to turn so you're facing the congregation. Wonderful. Confirmands and parents and siblings and grandparents and uncles and aunts and all kinds of folk, friends, good friends. And I invite all of us who are gathered to join together in the prayer for these people. Let us pray. Gracious God, giver of life, you have called us by name and pledged to each of us your faithful love. We pray today for your blessing on these young people who affirmed their baptismal vows. Watch over them and guide them as they continue to grow in faith. 
remind us of the promises of our own baptism and renew our trust in you. Strengthen us to do your will and to serve you with joy through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us show our joy and our support with applause. You may be seated. Thank you. Blessings abound in this place. What an abundance of gifts we have shared here today. Let us respond, each giving as we are able, according to the blessings God has given to us. Our offering will be received as the youth share another song that they learned at Maritime Conference. Wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In my questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you home, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore. tomorrow brings with each morning i'll rise and sing my god's love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea fire before us you're the brightest you will lead us through the storms. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to
Let us pray. God, your generosity is boundless. Today in this place and time, we recognize the abundance of gifts you have given to your people. We recognize that not everyone shares this abundance. So accept the gifts we offer today. With these gifts, accept also our prayers for those in need here and around the world. May the concerns of our hearts, the offering of our gifts, and the work of our hands bring love and grace to a world in need. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us all join together in singing Called by Earth and Sky, which appears in more voices, number 135, or on the screens. After you've enjoyed a delicious barbecue in the gym hosted by the Christian Development Committee, may you go forth into the world with the daring and tender love for the world is waiting. Let us go in peace. And may the grace, love, and communion of God, creator, liberator, and sustainer, be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen.
Woohoo!